Hi and welcome to Acme's YouTube channel. My name's Kate Fakay and today I'm talking to art director and colorist Dave Blush as he steps us through his process for designing the color and lighting scripts for major feature animations such as Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Hi Dave, welcome back. It's so great to speak to you again today. How's it going? It's going good. Um, thanks, thanks for so bringing much. me back on. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for talking us through your career pathway last time. And we're really looking forward to having you take us through some of your um, project work as a colour and lighting sure. director. So I'll just hand thank over you. to you and let you take over. I'll start with Spider-Man. Now, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, what we have here is this is a chart I make for a film. I do this on every film I work on. Wow. Um, I got this idea from a book I was reading uh, from Bruce Block. What I do when I read a script is that as I'm reading key moments or like a sequence breakdown they have, I will just jot down certain numbers for myself. Like, and those numbers are equivalent to, is it really bright? Is it really dark? Is it really saturated, desaturated, warm, cool, and contrast level? And what I'm doing is that I'm charting the film as we go. And then I can just kind of come in here and it's like, this is how we're starting out. This is the overall trajectory of the movie and its palette. This is really rough. This is a sketch. Uh -huh. It's not a final rendering. It's just to show that, A, that your film isn't just all up here or it's flatlined. Mm. Because if your film is all like in one section, you know, if it like if it's just kind of crunched, then it's not going to be a very inspiring movie to watch. Right. So you have to give the audience a reason uh, to go somewhere with them. You want them to follow you. So I make these are the sketch of notes, and I go from there. From this point, I'm going to just pull this over here. I'm going to grab. I start. What I do is these mood boards color boards and mood boards that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. So the, the mood board, um, this is a section in Spider-Man. One of the first, uh, one of the first, actually probably the first mood board I did. This is a moment where Miles Morales goes up to, into the graveyard and he's going, hopefully I'm not going to do any spoilers here. So uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie, I'm going to tell you something right now. <laughs> um, okay, they had enough time to turn it off. Um, what happens is, is that Miles is going into the graveyard to see Peter Parker, who passed away. This is the, f the first Peter Parker, not Peter Parker number two, Peter B. Parker. <laughs> um, just so people understand. Um, so what I've done is that I, I looked at, at the part of the script and I started to break it down. Like, what's this moment all about? You know, um, well, this is Miles feeling sorry and trying to find, you know, Peter has died. He blames himself and how he's going to, you know, redeem and hold, and hold on to his promise for what he, well, what he said is going to stop the collider, you know. But this is sort of like a foreshadowing. I wanted the church grounds to have this Spider-Man red in the snow. This is, uh -huh. so I, I found some images that I really liked. I wanted the environment to represent the Spider-Man colors, um, the Peter Parker Spider-Man colors. Miles will eventually find his. I'm gonna jump back on that, I, that thought in a minute. So what I'm laying down here is like, these are images that I found. Uh -huh. um, from films, abstract, you know, things I found online. And I color correct them. And I try to find a palette that works. So this is like from social network, you know. Uh -huh. I'm thinking of this as possibly Miles talking over the gravestone, you know, this type right. of lighting, and this type of color. I'm thinking of this as an overall palette, maybe for the environment, you know. Right. I love like these peach colors and these reds here and these little accents of blues. So I'm seeing Spider-Man colors in this world. I'm thinking of how he's walking in there. I love how these red lights and these shadows come in. Maybe this is when he talks to Peter. You know, he has a, like he's full of red, you know, in the, in the ground, the background's kind of blue. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then like when we see Peter Parker and then like some ideas here and there, and this is uh -huh. actually from the film itself, the church, some of the design. So, what I'm doing at this moment is I'm kind of laying in uh, tent poles or pins, 
you know, I'm making rules. Um, I'm saying that this particular moment, the color for this is going to be like this area right here. Like it's, this, this red is going to be here. I will make these similar things for the characters and, and, you know, throughout the film. So it helps me kind of, I got to have a place to start. So in the film, you notice that Miles Brooklyn is very warm. We made that point because warm is Brooklyn. That's home. That's, that's family. That's safe. He, that's what he knows. The school is very, you know, um, you know, has a lot of more modernism to it, colors and architecture. So that's going to be off for him. So it's going to feel very foreign. So Miles has to feel foreign. So those, that, those colors are going to be brighter. The lighting is going to be sharper. New York City is going to be, have more of like more blacks, uh, more blues in it, and, and, you know, sharper shadows and a lot of floor, and a lot of car lights and fluorescent lighting from the sides. Doc Ock, we're going more, into the greens and blacks. Obviously, Kingpin is, we wanted to go with this black hole uh, effect with him. So his jacket always feels flat and black. So now you start making these notes and these pins down, you start dropping down Prowler is purple, you know, Aunt May's house is very low contrast you know, because it represents who she is. And now you kind of laid this down. So you start making these boards like, okay, well, Miles is this. If we're gonna be home, it's gonna be this color. If it's gonna be, in in Doc Ock's world, we know it's going to have this type of thing. That's going to help you later on because stories are going to change and you're going to have to adjust and pivot to what's the next thing. Okay, well, I have to adjust this painting or this lighting scene. Just because I'm doing this, it feels great. It looks great on paper. It doesn't always mean it's going to work. It generally usually works because we lay everything up. There's always some time like, we all feel it works. It's going to look great. And then all of a sudden we get there and it's like, we start lighting the scenes and we're like, eh, I don't think this is going to work, but we, we pivot, you know, maybe change the lighting here or change the colors here, but we don't have to go that far because we've already made certain decisions and we're not painting ourselves into a corner. We just know that we can shift a little uh, to accommodate the story. Okay. So the next thing from where this goes now that we have our mood board and we've charted out the whole film, up to the mood board, I have about, oh, I do one for every sequence. So the next one we go to, I'm gonna show you an example of, this is, we'll go from the storyboard and I'll show you. This was an early storyboard slash layout. This is Miles right here kind of walking you know, as we cut to the scene. And I just kind of look at this and I talk to the directors based off, all right, all these colors that we've talked about right here, you know, we start implementing this, this type of palette into here. We haven't, made the, we haven't made the decision yet to figure out well, what's gonna be what. We did talk about how we wanted the illuminated snow to feel red. We'd like these purples and maybe, we know the church is right here. So we're trying to figure out how do we make um, choices? Mm -hmm. Sometimes our choices aren't gonna work initially. So I may like the red here, but maybe it's gonna be blue here. So we just kind of figure it out, but we do like this palette. So the next step in this is where the color key actually ended up, the lighting. This is the color script key for this. So I wanna make sure Miles reads here. And again, we're talking really rough paint, mm -hmm. but I'm making sure his local color pops out. I wanted to give a lot of this warmth, but have it roll off to the outside. And if you look, and we'll, we'll go back in a second, we'll look at those reference images, but I really wanted to have this sense of this stained glass, this warm stained glass being projected onto the snow. And the snow actually has that Spider-Man red to it. And now I have all these purples, blacks in here. Mm -hmm. So when I go back, to here, you're now starting to see this relationship where you know these colors are tend to now infiltrate and come into this world. This is what we're thinking. This is how okay, this is what I'm thinking when I'm working here. This is how I work. This isn't this isn't how everybody works. You find the way you want to work, it works best for you. I'm not telling you to do it this way. This is what works for me. Um, I find this process to be very half uh, the work really well when it comes to working with directors, uh, the production designer and the art director, it's very collaborative. 
I also tend to go at this stage of the game, we're in this stage, I find this to be the real part of the meat of everything, the color script. Because at this stage of the game, we're showing these images, I'm push and pulling a lot of different things and we're having these discussions. They might ask me, can you get another image and what it would look like possible lighting idea? Well, here's a possible lighting idea. So is this and so is this. Um, and that's, so when it gets to this stage right here, now we're just applying and it's the labor part. It's still a lot of fun. The process is there. I'm, I'm deciding, okay, like these colors here and I'm picking this and I'm trying to find a relationship of this stained glass color onto the snow and I'm making it warm. He's obviously trying not, he's not walking in a lot of the warmth, you know, he's still in his feeling, he feels sad uh, about what happened with Peter. He feels responsible. So that all works, that's all working great, but what happens is, is sometimes in the film, camera changes, the color changes, things happen, as I was saying. So in the final frame of the film, what you see here, here's Miles walking. The camera, the location flipped, but the essence of everything is still there. You know, we move the lighting over to here, make this warm and kind of cool this all off. So to make him feel a little more of a lonely and then have to go and travel into this world and where Peter's grave is. So it happens all the time, <laughs> mm -hmm. but to think of the process that we, as we started from here, oops, from this to here, actually I should even go back to the, to the, the mood board to here and then to this, and then it ended up being here. It all still has a trajectory, it all still follows. Mm. Let me show you a couple of others. Um, this one, same thing, Let me go full screen. This was a layout storyboard image. This is Miles. This is when Peter Parker jumps down, Peter B. Parker. And so this is the color script key for it. I wanted to get this light from the, the church stained glass to feel warmth on him. If you can see the, yeah. the, the sense of orange and warm light on him, I wanted him to feel warm and have a sense of family and have a sense of calm being reassured um he's still in this world here and, and the, the, the colors that we choose and then this again camera pivoted and changed but this was again that kind of idea that had that kind of warm rim light behind him this particular frame doesn't have all that but that was still the, the essence mm -hmm. of what we wanted to achieve there mm -hmm. as they went into the shot they kind of they did they did minimize a lot of the extra color that, that's fine. I, that's what they felt. They wanted to narrow it down. That happens. But you do clearly see the, 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 the Spider-Man red and blue here and how it's influencing Miles. I'll show you one more here and for Spider-Man. Um, this right here was the storyboard of Miles lifting the mask and talking to Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. This was the color keys, um, I call it color key, but color script painting I did give an idea of like a lot of bokeh lighting, a lot of the city kind of almost feels like it's mixing in with the snow that's coming down, you know, up light as we talked about and possibly this image right here. Mm -hmm. you know, trying to take this kind of as an, as, as an element of influence. So I like this idea of this lighting, I like this palette. I wanted to keep some of his local color. So, and then in the final frame of the film is this right here. Mm -hmm. So again, they, they pushed in, we wanted to get more of the, the snow. We didn't push the bokeh that much and they took a lot more of the blue fill on him, but this was kind of the influence here for this shot. And mm -hmm. that's pretty much the stages of how to get to these particular shots. So last thing I'll show you here is I'll show you the actual contact sheet. Uh, of the color script. So some of these images I painted, some of them are from other artists that I would just color correct to put in there. The directors wanted me to do is just to take some of these images and kind of make them work into the scene, mm -hmm. feel harmonious to everything. So some are a little more detailed than others. As I said earlier, it's like, well, why are you, you said don't paint them so detailed. Well, some of them they've already been painted as, as right. pieces for the movie. Um, they just went, why redo it when somebody's already done it? And I can take that information and just color correct and make some small adjustments to it. Right. 
it says, and I don't own these things. I'm just going in there and I'm just trying to make it all work. So you can mm. kind of see like miles, like this was some early production artwork and we just changed the color <laughs> on it. And we just kind of put miles in this scene, you know, this is some other early production artwork. All right. These are just some things that we did. I just threw in some background just to kind of see the difference between the school and Manhattan in the background. Mm -hmm. Some earlier ideas in the film that are no longer are no longer there. But here's a, a you know color key um, painting of Miles's home. You know, with his mom mm -hmm. and dad. His, you know, his his, his mom. Um, you know, is an interracial marriage. So his mom is Puerto Rican. His father's African American. I just wanted to show their home in Brooklyn and their influence on Miles. Always targeting the red sweatshirt. You know, that's Miles' color. The right. red and the blue, you know, the Air Jordans and stuff. But I always wanted to make sure that that was working. This is, this uh, was a battle with the Green Goblin and Spider-Man. This is Miles down here, uh -huh. you know. And then this is one of the first Collider pieces. And this was originally laid out by Patrick O'Keefe, the, the, the art director in environments. Uh, he's an incredible artist. And mm. I would just take what he did and I'm just changing a few things of color. And what I'm trying to do is get an idea of what this collider ray is going to look like, you know? Right. So again, working as a team, working together and sharing all this information, uh, just trying to make it better. Cause then this is going to be handed off to another group of artists who are going to take it. It just keeps getting moved forward. And as we say, was it the kit, the kit, the can gets kicked down the road. Just keep going, going, going. I just wanted to show you just a couple of more pieces. It's just like, you know, just kind of showing you Peter Parker's, um, uh, what do you call it? his, uh, his hideout, you know, mm -hmm. here's Peter B Parker and miles, like tell him he's got to do this job, you know? So there's a lot of different things. This is just showing miles. This was a, you can kind of see here, this was miles, um, dorm room. Mm -hmm. I did a series of these just to change the feeling and the temperature of the dorm room that would match what miles was feeling at the time this is obviously when he becomes spider-man this was a spider-man part when he just takes the the ownership of who he is you know and you can see how really rough this is you know really wanted to have the feeling of miles walking into this blue with the red accents you know mm -hmm. the lights this, that's his spider-man red color right um yeah so this is the color script and then there were, once I handed this off, there were others that were put in and, and uh, taken out. They wanted more frames. I went on to another assignment. So they kind of like, oh, we should put this one in here and in here. But I do want to, just one last thing I want to show you. Mm -hmm. so this is the, uh, spoiler, this is the death of the Prowler, you know? So we really wanted the lighting to feel very angelic at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this is the moment when Miles, you know, how he wanted this lighting to feel. And this is his dad in the background. So we just kind of wanted to haze it up. It's dark, but it's still kind of more angelic with him and his uncle to show him that feeling, you know, where we're going. How you can find the emotion in a scene. Um, let me see if I can find one more for the emotion in the scene here real fast. Um, show you here's where he goes with his uncle and the train station again oh, iconic crazy. iconic red and this was a painting i think it was done by a couple of people i think zach zach Retz did some of the a lot of the painting on this and the layout i forget from him could be zach i took that information and then applied our characters uh, uh costume that we that we kind of redesigned a little bit to fit into this world i just wanted to show here like this is where miles does like his spray painting Mm -hmm. And I wanted to kind of take those colors from, from the mural, the spray painting mural, and scatter them throughout the environment here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have some of these greens and these yellows and these purples, just to kind of show, like, what's going to happen at this moment. Right. So those are the theories that you, know, you start thinking about in your head. This is, you know, his uncle's little pad, his little bachelor pad, just keeping it really simple mm -hmm. between these two. Spider Gwen. She has her own comic book, uh, her own, I think it was designed by Jason Latour. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's who did it. Um, and that has its own unique style. So we had to make sure that Spider-Gwen had her world was represented. Right. Spider-Noir, which, um, which is 
voiced by Nick Cage. So hence is very just, you know, black and white. If we had to, so we had to create these worlds, you know, or represent them. And then you'll, we'll see in the film, there are these moments when, um, you know, where they come from. That's like, I think it's like, as they tell the story, when they come, they get sucked up, you know, they all kind of see a little piece of where they came from in their environment. Spider Ham, you know, same thing was obviously very Warner Brothers, you know, old classic 2D animation. So uh, that stuff is, is that that is all represented in the film as we go. At this stage, when I was working on it, that wasn't there just yet. So as I say, it's like, we're doing this. <clears throat> this is just the initial foundation we're going to start adding things and taking things away. And, you know, we're going to start, maybe you might want to see what it looks like in, in spider Gwen's world or spider hands world. So we might need a painting for that. But at this stage, we didn't, we didn't do it for this moment because we weren't sure where they were going to be. Um, right. What's next sure. for you? What are you working on now? Well, I just finished working. I just finished wrapping up on uh, uh, connected doing uh, lighting and color design for the film. Uh, worked with a great group there. It's another unique look. Um, think of like um, watercolor, magic marker, and outlines and stuff. And it's a it's a great story. Uh, it's directed by Mike Rianda and Jeff Rowe. And uh, I worked with a great group of people on that team. And I think that comes out in October into the film into the theaters. Um, I can't just wait. trying to, I just finished, I'm getting some downtime and then I start up on the sequel of Spider-Man, Spider-Verse 2 uh, at the end of the month. So oh, how exciting. I'm to that. So I got to get some rest. So yeah, get some rest. Start up and uh, we will lock down and hopefully our cinemas will be reopened by, by then while well, in Victoria. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> it's, I mean, the, to see this and experience this in the theater is always fantastic. So oh, I can't wait. Yeah, I'll we'll <laughs> certainly be looking for an opportunity to see this. We, we watched it on, on the small screen, but uh, yeah, definitely can't wait to see it on the big screen and the, awesome. and the sequel. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dave. We really can't thank you enough and all the best. Thank you. And, uh, and with your next projects, I can't wait to see what comes next. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the time and thank you for asking me. Okay, take care. See ya. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that project breakdown as much as I did. You can hear more from Dave and other top screen professionals in the rest of the Behind the Screens videos, as well as a running free series on the ACME YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe.